Hi, my name is Christine, and I'm here to interview Stefan Grunwald, who is the Global Product Manager for Lutz's Cable Business, on why you should use VFD cable for motors being controlled by VFDs. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Christine. Good to see you. So you've created the Lutz's DriFlex product line specifically designed for VFD cable applications. What gave you this idea to create a cable for VFD applications? Well, that's a great question. We found out that many of our customers are using power tray cable that was not initially designed to be used with VFDs, but it fulfills current code. The more I talked to these customers, the more I realized that the conversion, the power conversion inside the VFD causes some electrical challenges to those cables. And um, the more we looked into it, the more we uh, found out that it's really about the type of insulation. THHN, or known as PVC nylon, it's not very safe, can oftentimes not cope with the electrical challenges that, that are um, caused by the power conversion inside the VFD. Can you elaborate a little more on the electrical challenges that you just mentioned? Yes, there are three main challenges. Let me use the whiteboard to explain. The first one is the cable capacitance, or in other words, the amount of current that is required to charge the cable before I transfer any current that can be consumed by the motor. The longer the cable, the higher the cable charging current. This extra charging current makes the VFD work harder and creates nothing but heat. To avoid this major problem, you want a cable that offers you low capacitance values. This is the first rule for any good VFD cable. The second problem is the cable impedance and the motor impedance being in a mismatch. In a sense, this is like a bottleneck causing a splashback. The impedance mismatch is partially responsible for what is called the reflective wave phenomenon that in turn creates a lot of electrical problems and can lead to common mode noise and motor failures. The third problem is the presence of high voltage spikes which are a result of the internal power conversion and frequency using a process called pulse width modulation. This is typical for most VFDs today, and it basically means that your output voltage from the VFD is much higher than the input voltage, and that you can have a series of voltage spikes caused by the frequency conversion. As a result, your cable must withstand a lot higher voltages than you may have expected. We have seen spikes on a 480 volt drive reaching 1200 volts on the motor. For this reason, you want a thermoset insulation material that can withstand nominal voltages of at least 1,000 volt for an extended time. PVC insulation is just a bad choice from a voltage standpoint, and that's why we have switched all our VFD cable to XLPE, which is simply a much better insulation and safer for use with VFDs compared to PVC or THHN-based wiring. This is very interesting. Um, do you have any other reasons why VFD cable should be used in industrial applications? Yes, there are some other reasons. For example, VFD cable is shielded, and the shield allows you to capture and drain the noise away to ground. The other reason is there are some code and safety concerns about using THHN. THHN is a very old technology that was uh, initially invented as building wire way before VFDs even existed. That's why when we designed our DriveFlex line, we looked for new technology, better technology installation, that we feel is safer and addresses all the problems caused by the VFD. Well, thank you very much for this interview, and thank you for explaining why we should use VFD cable. Thank you.